This video describes how to make a stool from thermite. A full PDF of these charts is included with a reference at the end of the full video. Thermite has been around since the 1700s and often is known as drum turning or barrel turning. It allowed furniture makers to create a number of spindles or balusters simultaneously, creating unique shapes. You might look at thermed spindles or legs as shown here and say, I could do that on a bandsaw. Well, look more closely. If you look at the lower image, you can see the outer edge of each therm surface has a curvature determined by the diameter of your therming rig. Two variations of therming rigs are shown here. One for use in repeated therming with a center shaft with a number two Morse taper to mount on the drive end of the lathe. A simpler one just has two end plates and the spindles are mounted on centering dowels. We'll use the simpler one for this presentation. The therming fixture is made from three quarter inch plywood cut to eight inch diameter circles. These circles are stacked and then the face plate is attached with one and a half inch screws so it ties all of the pieces together. This is going to allow us to align the pieces to put it on the lathe using the face plate and smooth the outer edge. I recommend sanding and not using a roughing gouge because if you use a roughing gouge you'll tend to splinter the plywood. Then take it off and we're going to drill the hole patterns preferably using a drill press to get good perpendicular holes. Follow the diagram shown, which if you want to look in more detail is going to be included in a PDF that you can download from my website. Details at the end of this recording. Spindles are cut from your wood of choice each to the same length. Here we're using 10 inch long spindles, three inches on a side. Make sure the ends are square so that they mount firmly against your plywood end plates. You want to mark a center hole in each spindle, drill a half inch hole, one half inch deep, or the dowels that give us a good pivot point. The spindles are assembled to the end plates using the centering dowels and then on the face plate end we use three screws per spindle. We've mounted the face plate end of the rig with three screws per spindle, then stacked the other end and only put one screw in each spindle, not completely entered. Then we put it on the lathe and make sure we've got it all centered up and tighten the end screws on the tailstock end and put the rest of the three screws in place. To summarize how we assemble the therming rig, we put the dowels in the two plywood end plates, stack the spindles with the holes in each end of the spindles and then attach the faceplate end with screws, three screws per spindle. For the turning sequence you're going to be turning air. It's a term that describes surfaces that aren't continuous as you're turning them. We've got three separate spindles mounted here so between each there's a gap of air. You'll understand this a little better when you watch the video that follows shortly. After you've turned the first set of surfaces, you want to remove the screws and rotate the spindles towards you. That'll give you a clean edge for the second and third and subsequent surfaces. Once you've done all the surfaces, you can sand on the therming rig, but that's another whole subject that we could approach later. Now you're going to see a short video that walks you through the entire sequence of turning.
the first surface, and the tools that are used. Here's a brief video to show you the sequence of turning steps for one rotation of the spindles. Make sure you check the clearances manually so that your spindles don't run into the tool rest. Now we're ready to start turning. I'm using a roughing gouge here. It's a pretty good tool for the basic smooth curves. Because we're turning air, make sure you approach the surface edges of the wood slowly rather than taking a big chunk. Here you can see the outer curvature starting to take shape. Let's start turning the desired shape. Again, I've started off with a roughing gouge, which is fine for gradual curves and an overall round shape. If you look closely at the upper shadow, you can start to see the gradual curve emerging. I find that a detail gouge works very well for turning the coves and sharper curves, much like you're just turning spindles. The only difference is there's some air in between these spindles. You're probably wondering, how do you know when you're getting the desired shape? Well, the shadow is actually your guide. If you look at the upper shadow as you're turning, you can not only see the shape emerging, but you can see the smoothness of the shape, and you can fine-tune the surfaces. To complete the turning, go ahead and use the tools you're comfortable with for turning spindles. I'll show you a variety of tools, starting out with a roughing gouge, and then going on to a spindle gouge, and a Hunter Hercules tool, number one, for the final smoothing. We're getting close to the final desired shape, but we still need a little fine tuning. So I'm going to use a Thompson 5 8 inch spindle gouge. And the nice thing about this tool, you can have some good control over the cuts, plus it's beefier, so it doesn't bounce as much when you're turning air.
getting real close to the final desired shape. And again, it's whatever shape you want it to be. But here I see a little bit of roughness in some of the curved surfaces. So I'm going to use a finishing tool. I like this Hercules number one. It's a hunter tool. But a detail couch would work just as well. We've turned that first surface and it's looking pretty good. Might need a little bit of additional sanding, but we can talk about that later. So we've completed this first surface, so now you need to stop the lathe, take the whole rig off, remove the screws, and rotate each spindle, 90 degrees in this case, for a four-sided spindle. And that's it. Now what we've got left is the seat. We've turned the spindles, those should be ready to go. And we're going to make the seat out of a fairly thick piece of wood of your choice. I used one that was about two inches thick, drew a curved triangular pattern as shown, and then you mount it on the lathe. I like to grab it on the bottom, much like you're turning a thin platter, then complete the turning. I'll show you the full sequence in the next slide. Summarizing, you make the seat by cutting out the triangular shape from a block of wood. Turn a dished out area, much like you would a shallow platter. Then mark where the legs are going to go for the dowels and put it all together using a brace as necessary. A variety of shapes are possible depending upon how much you rotate the spindles between each turning sequence. Shown here are three-sided and five-sided spindles. Use your favorite materials for finishing and here you can see I added a brace between the three legs. Make sure you dry fit parts before doing final assembly. Here's the completed stool with a rotating view. A copy of this presentation is included in PDF format on my website www.horais.com. You can see the dimensions of the drawings and a little more about putting the whole project together. Thanks for watching.